Hope you've had a lovely day and we are now on chapter 15 of Danny the Champion of the World and this one is called The Keeper. We sat on the grassy bank below the hedge waiting for darkness to fall. The sun had now set and the sky was a pale smoke blue faintly glazed with yellow. In the wood behind us the shadows in the spaces in, the, in between the trees were turning from grey to black. You could offer me anywhere in the world at this moment, my father said, and I wouldn't go. His whole face was glowing with happiness. We did it, Danny, he said, laying a hand gently on my knee. We pulled it off. Doesn't that make you feel good? Terrific, I said, but it was a bit scary whilst it lasted. Ah, but that's what poaching's all about, he said. It scares the pants off us. That's why we love it. Look. There's a hawk. I looked where he was pointing and I saw a kestrel hawk hovering superbly in the darkening sky above the ploughed field across the track. It's his last chance for supper tonight, my father said. He'll be lucky if he sees anything now. Except for the swift fluttering its wings, the hawk remained absolutely motionless in the sky. It seemed to be suspended by some invisible thread, like a toy bird hanging from the ceiling. Then suddenly it folded its wings and plummeted towards the earth at an incredible speed. This was a sight that always thrilled me. What do you think he saw, Dad? A young rabbit, perhaps, my father said, or a vole or a field mouse. None of them has a chance when there's a kestrel overhead. We waited to see if the hawk would fly up again. He didn't, which meant he had caught his prey and was eating it on the ground. How long does a sleeping pill take to work? He asked. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one, my father said. I imagine it's about half an hour. It might be different with pheasants though, Dad. Mm, it might, he said. We've got to wait a while anyway to give the keepers some time to go home. They'll be off as soon as it gets dark. I've brought an apple for each of us, he added, fishing into one of his pockets. A Cox's orange pippin, I said, smiling. Thank you very much. We sat there munching away. One of the nice things about a Cox's orange pippin, my father said, is that the pips rattle when it's ripe. Shake it and you can hear them rattling. I shook my half-eaten apple. The pips rattled. Look out, he whispered sharply. There's someone coming. The man had appeared suddenly and silently out of the dusk and was quite close before my father saw him. It's another keeper, he whispered. Just sit tight and don't say a word. We watched the keeper as he came down the track towards us. He had a shotgun under his arm and there was a black Labrador walking at his heel. He stopped when he was a few paces away and the dog stopped with him and stayed behind him watching us through the keeper's legs. Good evening, my father said, nice and friendly. This one was a tall, bony man with a hard eye and a hard cheek and hard, dangerous hands. I know you, he said, coming closely. I know the both of you. My father didn't answer this. You're from the filling station, right? His lips were thin and dry with some sort of brownish crust over them. You're from the filling station and that's your boy and you live in that filthy old caravan, right? What are you playing? My father said, 20 questions. The keeper spat out a big gob of spit and I saw it go sailing through the air and land with a plop on a patch of dry dust six inches from my father's plastered foot. It looked like a baby, a little baby oyster lying there. Ooh. Beat it, the man said. Go on, get out. When he spoke, his upper lip lifted above the gum and I could see a row of small discoloured teeth. One of them was black. The others were brownish yellow, like seeds of pomegranate. This happens to be a public footpath, my father said. Kindly do not molest us. The keeper shifted the gun from his left arm to his right. No picture there. You're loitering, he said, with intent to commit a nuisance. I could run you in for that. No, you couldn't, my father said. 
All this made me rather nervous. I see you broke your foot, the keeper said. You didn't by any chance fall into a hole in the ground, did you? It's been a nice walk, Danny, my father said, putting a hand on my knee. But it's time we went home for supper. He stood up and so did I. We wandered off down the track the way we had come, leaving the keeper standing there, and soon he was out of sight in the, in the half darkness behind us. That's the head keeper, my father said. His name is Rabbits. Do we have to go home, Dad? Home, my father cried. My dear boy, we're just beginning. Come in here. There was a gate on our right leading into a field and we climbed over it and sat down beside, behind the hedge. Mr Rabbits is also due for his supper, my father said. You mustn't worry about him. We sat quietly behind the hedge, waiting for the keeper to walk past on, the way, on his way home. A few stars were showing, and a bright three-quarter moon was coming up over the hills behind us in the east. We have to be careful of that dog, my father said. When they come by, hold your breath. Don't move a muscle. Won't the dog smell us out anyway? I asked. No, my father said. There's no wind to carry the scent. Look out. Here they come. Don't move. The keeper came loping softly down the track with the dog padding quickly and soft footed at his heel. I took a deep breath and held it as they went by. When they were some distance away, my father stood up and said, it's all clear. He won't be coming back tonight. Are you sure? I'm positive, Danny. What about the other one, the one in the clearing? Ah, he'll be gone too. Mightn't one of them be waiting for us at the bottom of the track? I asked, by the gap in the hedge. There wouldn't be any point in him doing that, my father said. There's at least 20 different ways of reaching the road when you come out of Hazel's Wood. Mr Rabbits knows that. We stayed behind the behind the hedge for a few minutes more, just to be on the safe side. Isn't it marvellous, though? Isn't it a marvellous thought, though, Danny? My father said that there's about two hundred pheasants at this very moment roosting up in those trees, and they're already beginning beginning to feel groggy. Soon they'll be falling out of the branches like raindrops. The three quarter moon was well above the the hills and the sky was filled with stars as we climbed back over the gate and began walking up the track towards the wood. And that's the end of the chapter. Good night.